Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I will be smoking, I don't know why I put my hands up, today I will be smoking the Killer Bee Connecticut. And if you watch the live stream over on Pick Jimmy Cigar Reviews channel, DJ posted the and reshared the live stream from a couple of days ago where I actually started off the live stream by smoking this wonderful Petite Corona slash Rothschild, courtesy of Blackworks Studio. And this is a four and a half by 46 Petite Corona slash Rothschild. It is a really beautiful looking cigar. It features Ecuadorian Connecticut slash Maduro dual wrapping on both the foot of the cigar and then on the triple kind of cap look at the top in that signature Blackwork Studio fashion. Not a ton to get off the foot as we do have a closed foot with that Ecuadorian Maduro. For those of you out there did not have the opportunity to watch my original Killer Bee review, I'll link that above. The short story on the review, if you do not want to watch it, is that I was a huge fan. Being that this is the second one of these that I have smoked, I can tell you that it is different than most of the Connecticut's that I've featured on the channel. It does have a little bit of additional spice and also some extra creaminess to it, which I thoroughly enjoyed a couple of days ago when I smoked my first one. Very much cream dominant with all of the rich spices on the Maduro and the Ecuadorian kind of Connecticut wrapper just coming right on the retro. So in your face spice to start off with if you retrohale, but if you do not retrohale, it is nothing but pure cream. Yeah, the, the blowing out a little bit of smoke and then retrohaling, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> to the point where you can, your eyes are watering, you can feel the black pepper all over your olfactory senses and it's just, wow. You know, and um, I talked a little bit in the past about people that put Lajero at the, at the base of the shag foot or at the closed foot and just light you up with flavor right away. That's what this cigar does. Whether it's Lajero or whether it's just Ecuadorian Maduro tobacco that they put on the foot of that cigar, it just lights you up immediately. But not in a bad way, because if you don't retrohale the cigar, you probably wouldn't think much of it. You would just think, wow, this is really creamy. This is Connecticut. This is shade. This is, you know, very just full of butter, almond, a little bit of toasty notes, honey, maybe a, a touch of molasses. We are smoking on down our Killer Bee just past the first third into the second third and it just ashed all over the place finally. But I did get a nice little photo that I'll include on Instagram of the ash as well as in this video. And just like on the live stream, it was ready to go when it was ready to go. We got about maybe an inch and a half down and that ash was just falling. So great construction so far, fantastic blend. As we've progressed through the first third and now hit the second third, there is definitely a nice kind of just dial back of the pepper. And the pepper was just an intense amount of black and red pepper. It styled itself back. Now we get this nice little subtle white pepper, black pepper kind of mix, which is good enough to retrohale without providing some sort of aggregate where, you know, you get the water in the eyes and, you know, it kind of overwhelms the palate just slightly. We are dealing with a Connecticut that has dialed up the spice on the palate. So there's more weight to it. The finish is a little bit longer. It's almost as if you took, and I know that in the original Killer Bee review that I did, I talked about sakes and I talked about umishu and I talked about all of these great Japanese made spirits and products. Well, not just Japanese, but Asian made spirits and products coming from Asia that I thought would pair well with that original Killer Bee. A lot of sakes, right, are fortified with additional alcohol to raise up the alcohol by volume, allow them to be a little bit heavier on the palate and allow them to kind of create a longer finish. Just like your vermouth, right? You take a fortify, you take wine, you fortify it with additional alcohol, you get an increase in alcohol by volume, and then you also get more length on the finish, you get more body overall usually, and that's what this cigar really is. It is a killer bee, 
with a little bit more body length than your standard Connecticut. And at the $10 price point, I believe that's the MSRP on these, box of 24, it's not a bad stick at all. We're about 25, maybe 30 minutes in and we're hitting the halfway point. So this is only going to be about a 50 to an hour long smoke, 50 minutes to about an hour long. And you have to kind of keep that in perspective, right? There are bigger Connecticut's that I have smoked on this channel that have lasted just as long. So as far as overall time on stick, as far as quality of the burn line so far for the first half of this, this is this is a top tier Connecticut. And I know that we talked a little bit about the Aganorsa Connecticut that I smoked on the channel and reviewed and how that was spicy enough, full bodied enough almost to pair with a variety of whiskeys, cognacs, rums, agave spirits, like the full spectrum was pretty much open. And that's kind of how I feel about this cigar too. I feel like, you know, being that it is a spicier, more medium to full body Connecticut, medium plus to full body body Connecticut, you have more versatility in what you can pair with it. And unlike the original Killer B where I had like a plum note that came off of it, this Connecticut never really had that plum note. So with that, I, my mind doesn't just default to whiskey and Japanese Asian style spirits, it's more versatile. And being that it has extra body to it, just like the original Killer B, um, this Connecticut can pair with a lot of great products that are out there in terms of spirits, cocktails, different flavors that are out. But yeah, the spice is great. It's if you're not a seasoned smoker and you're not retrohaling, it's very mild on the palate. But if you are retrohaling and you are a seasoned smoker, this is going to be kind of overwhelming at times to you. So. I think that at $10, it's worthy of a try. I would definitely love to maybe grab a couple, like in a five pack, and just set that off to the side and see kind of how they develop over time. I mean, <clears throat> all of the cigars from Blackwork Studio that I've ever gotten have had great burn, consistency, draw, everything has been fantastic with them. And I don't think that there's really much that you're going to age into this cigar blend. I think that they are there to smoke as soon as they ship and they're always ready to smoke as soon as they ship. So I don't think that there's anything that has to be overcome with it. I would just like to see if the spice holds up a year or two down the road. And I don't know about you, but I haven't been smoking Blackwork Studio long enough to have anything that's of the age variety. So anyone out there that smokes some Blackwork Studio with a little bit of age on it, I'd love a comment. I'd love for you to put in the description so that you know the fans of the show can uh, better know, like, do you see a difference in a Blackwork Studio cigar that you just bought off the shelf at your local brick and mortar and one that you've had in your humidor for a number of years? This has been my review of the Blackwork Studio Killer Bee in Connecticut. Petite Robusto. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and continuing to grow this community. We keep on going up and up, and I'm looking forward to what the future holds here in October, and uh, we're gonna have some fun this Halloween for sure. So thank you all again. I'll catch you soon for another cigar review.